20 bucks. 20 bucks. We're on the line for 20 bucks. They keep playing. No audience playing. Hi guys, it's Jabor from Montreal. And I'm Maggie, Mrs. Calabash. Come into my kitchen. We've got a treat for you today. I'm going to make, uh, you can see here, I've got uh, some mushrooms and breadcrumbs and egg. We're going to do golden fried mushrooms, uh, ground beef and pepper stir fry, and a perfect couscous. I like couscous. It's my go-to. Uh, I'm, I'm in a hurry. Couscous. Uh, Derek doesn't like couscous, so I'm only going to do a small amount. So let's go back to the stove and we'll see how the couscous is going. Come on, it's so easy to make, come on. I've got um, on here, I've got some, um, in here, I've got uh, chicken stock, oil, a little butter and some salt. And the recipe is Mrs. Calabash Perfect uh, Couscous. Now, you just bring all this to the boil. And here's the couscous waiting to go in. Now, this is an instant couscous. There are two different types of couscous. There's a pearl couscous and an instant couscous. And um, this really is instant food. So let's put this in. You can hear, possibly, in the background, you can hear the dogs howling. We've got four. They're upstairs in a room with television and a bed. But no, they want to be down here with us. So once the water, uh, the, your stock's boiling, add the couscous. Put it on the back of the stove. Leave it for about five minutes and everything's ready. Now, sometimes you'll see pearl couscous and couscous is made out of tapioca and what pearl couscous is like little balls of tapioca and in the olden days people like me at my age the grandmas would be out um, in the yard making these little balls of tapioca and then they put them on a large mat to dry and that's how couscous is made but this is instant couscous in france uh, we used to have couscous parties, and you have a cousy, a, cous, a cousier. So that means that you steam the uh, couscous on the top, and you make a savoury stew on the bottom. And there's couscous restaurants which are absolutely gorgeous. And so you'd probably have little bits of chicken, little bits of lamb, uh, sausage, all sorts of things in this gorgeous stew and then the couscous would be served with some flatbread absolutely delicious so stop reminiscing woman and let's get back and this is the uh, stir fry again you will see i've lost the recipe you'll see i've got it all written down there this is just a little sesame oil uh i do like sesame oil it adds that certain something now if um if you've got an allergy to sesame then just leave it out use a little uh, vegetable oil this is garlic and grated ginger fresh ginger we're just going to cook that until it's um, nicely aromatic i've had the beef um, I've had that marinade in for about a couple of hours in the fridge and the marinade is the sherry and and all the goodies that go there. This It does two things by marinading. The, um, you have the flavours going into the meat and it also tenderises the meat. Now, I'm using ground beef today. You could use ground turkey, chicken, pork. You could also use some sirloin, uh, sirloin strips, marinating strips. It's, it's easy, this one. 
you can decide what you're going to do. And actually, I like um, I like a mixture of pork and uh, a beef. A veal, if you like veal, if you can get veal, is very good. Mmm, the smell. It's lovely. So we're just browning this off. We just want to brown because this won't take long to cook at all. And they've got pepper strips here waiting to go in. And this, can you see that? That's, look, it's a purple pepper. Uh, pardon? That's a purple. The bow. There we are. It's got. I've got. I've got. I've got pur uh, purple pepper in there. Orange pepper. Yellow pepper. And because the, these will turn red eventually, but you can see they eat like a green pepper at this stage. I love the purple peppers. They've been so good this year. So let's get these just, I want to stir fry a little bit longer. I'm going to add the peppers. Look, lovely peppers. Use whatever you've got in. Don't go out and buy, because it says red pepper, oh, I've not got any red peppers in the, in, the, uh, in the kitchen or the fridge. Don't, just use the peppers that you've got. You can put a little hot pepper in here if you like. Just mix that in together. And we've got snap peas. This is a nice colourful dish and it's full of goodness. Some snap peas. And the juice is coming out of the meat beautifully. This was extra, ground, extra lean uh, ground beef that I'm using today. But I must confess, I use whatever I can get. So, we've got that. We're going to let that cook uh, for a few minutes. Uh, I've got some green onions here. They are quite small because this is at the, these are out of the garden. Some oyster sauce. And I've got a little extra cornstarch because the meat was marinated with cornstarch, but I never know if I've got, I've got enough. So when I've got uh, a sauce like this or uh, I need a little something to thicken, I always make sure I've got a little extra cornstarch there. Same with the water. Um, it's, everything depends on, on the type of meat that you're using. It's, uh, the water is a rough amount. So let's just put the top back onto there. We need that to cook for a few minutes. So I'm going to move the couscous over here. I'm going to move that over to there, like that. There we are. Turn that one off because we need, we've got another pan here and this is for the mushrooms. And so let's go back and just coat the rest of the mushrooms. So come back with me. These are golden fried mushrooms. And so smallish mushrooms. Dip the mushroom into beaten egg. And these are on the recipe I've put panko breadcrumbs, but these are my own breadcrumbs. I make bread and anything that I've got left over. I just um, I process into breadcrumbs. Uh, if the bread's getting a bit stale, process the breadcrumbs and put it put them in the freezer. Then I've always got breadcrumbs. You can add some herbs to these. I remember as a child collecting mushrooms this time of the year, and I remember one day. And it was full in the forest. Let's go back to the stove and I'll tell you. It was full in the forest and it was misty. It was gorgeous early in the morning. And 
in those days there were pheasants, wild pheasants, which were a game bird, and they've got a quite an eerie squeak, a shout, and suddenly there was this noise. I was terrified, I was only a little girl, and I was absolutely terrified, and I shot away from my father and hid in the car, and I wouldn't come out again because we were collecting mushrooms. We used to go and collect wild mushrooms. In here, I've got a little butter, in there, and a little oil, and some, I've put onions and a little garlic, and I've just cooked those until the uh, uh, garlic and onion are transparent. Now we're going to just put the mushrooms in, like that, you see, and they're going to fry. They don't take long to cook, mushrooms. I, as I say, smaller mushrooms are better than the big ones. But if you've only got big mushrooms, well, it's no hardship. So we just need those to fry. Do I have? No, I don't. Let's have a look. I need my little these to be able to turn the mushrooms over. Let's push them all together like that. We're going to, I can hear that cooking. Mm. Let's just stir it all around. We don't want to overcook. And just remember, because the meat has been marinated, it won't take quite so long to cook. There we are. And now it's got to this stage. I'm going to add the onions. I've lost that. There we are. Add the onions. Let me just put this on one side. It fell on the floor. I've got oyster sauce here. Now you notice I've not put any, um, I've not put any salt in there. Just remember the oyster sauce is salty. So we can always adjust the seasoning later. It adds a beautiful rich flavor to it. Now at this stage, we add a little water. So this is where I might have to add some more cornstarch corn or more water. Let's have a look. We add a little water, stir that, and let's see how it thickens. I'm going to pull it on the front here because I can't see at the back there. There we are. Oh, that's thickening beautifully. Look, it's thickening. So now we're going to test the seasoning and we can add some more seasoning. It needs a little salt and pepper. I can smell these, they're getting too well done. In fact, they've got very well done. We're going to have to take some of that, the, um, the onion has got too well done. It happens, so I'll show you what to do if this happens. We're going to have to resurrect those. There we are. So that is cooking beautifully. I will just put the lid back on. These have got far too crispy. So what we're going to do, just leave those to cook like that. We're going to take them to the table and we're going to take some of that brown off. It happens. It happens in the best regulated kitchens, believe you me. So we'll turn those on to low. 
let's go back and we'll make the dessert. I love dessert, but I don't want to spend a long time making the dessert. So let's go back. I've got my food processor. I nearly had that on the floor as well. There we are. There. And this is just, um, it's so easy. It's frozen pineapple and yogurt. And the yogurt that I'm using is a plain yogurt and it's a very acidic yogurt. So the acid with the pine, the sweetness of the pineapple go beautifully together. I'm just going to have to go back on the stove it's, um, and switch that off. It got a little bit hot. So let's have a look. I didn't know whether to use the big food processor or the small one. So it was a little bit too small for the big food processor and quite a lot for this one but I'll grind a little down to begin with. It's going to make a noise. A little more in there like that. It's asking a lot of it. And we put the yogurt in. I'm going to just strain that little whey off. You can use a low fat yogurt or just a plain um, ordinary yogurt. There we are. And this is a bit like a slushy. It's rather nice, especially on a hot day. There we are, some nice glasses to put it in. Let's take that out. I'm using frozen pineapple today. There's, you can use fresh pineapple or canned pineapple. Just make sure that the canned pineapple is drained and in natural juice. There we are. And I like to put on the top there, I like to put a few... Um, toasted almonds. Now I just put these in a, a skillet without any fat, a dry skillet and watch them very carefully because they can burn extremely quickly but by... Like mushrooms. Like mushrooms, yeah. They're, we got burnt mushrooms, yep. Uh, but we'll resurrect them. So we can scatter by toasting, by toasting the almonds you bring out the flavour. It's like roasting spices and it's adding some more nutrition. There we are. That is dessert made in a flash. So let's have a look. See, let's take out one of these flowers and put there like that. That one has decided that it's not going to live anymore. But this is a little Victorian, um, it's a little Victorian egg cup that my grandmother gave me when I was about eight and it, it was Easter and it had some half moon, tiny, tiny half moon uh, candies in there and at the bottom all folded very, very small was a 10 shilling note which was, it was a, a fortune to me as a child and uh, I've got two and um, they're, they're my grandmother's so they're quite old little Victorian egg cups 
Let's go and have a look at these mushrooms. We've got to do something with them. Yep, this happens. That is a tomato. Come on, let's have a look. That is cooked. Let's turn that down to low. We don't want another disaster. There we are. Mushrooms. Mushroom plate. Here we go. Things happen in the kitchen. They don't always go according to plan. And so part of, of cooking is knowing what to do if something goes wrong. When I was training, because um, at culinary school, I actually train, I'm a home economist, but I actually trained to be a demonstrator. And my first demonstration, I just need another knife. My first demonstration that I ever did in front of the principal was um, stuffed, uh, stuffed apples. So of course you core the apple and then you fill it with, um, with dried fruit. And of course the natural instinct is to pick up the apple and stuff it and then put breadcrumbs over the top. And of course it all falls out. So after about the second attempt, when it was all on the floor, I realized that no, you actually fill the apples um, you fill the apples on your cooking tray. And she said, yes, Miss Allen, I wondered how long it would take for you to realise your mistake. And she said, this is part and parcel of cooking live. Things go wrong. Um, and you have to be able to tell the ladies, if something goes wrong, don't panic, let's get out of it. And so this is all, all what happened. The worst thing was I was out in the middle of Derbyshire, in the middle of nowhere, and we always had, uh, I worked for the gas board, and we always had a gas fitter with us because um, it was dangerous. You know, we, we, we were using uh, bottled gas. And uh, this particular day, Everything I put in the oven was in flames. Uh, I'm in this little wooden hut, miles away from anywhere, and everything just burst into flames. And I thought, oh, I, I don't understand it. So I had to say to the ladies, well, sorry, but I'm going to have to show you how to, um, how to cook it, but you can't eat it because it's burnt. And the fitter came and had a look and he said, oh, I didn't put, there's a control knob and he forgot to put it on. <gasps> oh, well, never mind. And on the way home that night, we got stopped by the police. Uh, we're in the gas board van, got stopped by the police. We have a big laundry container full of dirty pots. And they said, would, it, would you please open up the container? And we said, why? It's got dirty pots in there. Don't believe you. There'd been a murder. So it was quite an eventful evening that night, a bit like today. So let's, let's dish this up. That's cooked. Couscous, here we go. I need that back again. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Just let's fork it together. Nice and light, look, beautiful. Now you could add some spice to this. You could add some, um, you could add some turmeric to it. Anything, it's lovely. I need a little dish. Let's put this in. Now, as I say, I love, I love couscous. I like it cold. Uh, I could use it as a basis for a salad um, in a stew, but Derek won't eat that, so that's mine. 
Now to dish up the peppers. Turn that off. We'll do one more tasting just to make sure. Yes. You can always add the uh, seasoning, but you can't take it away. There. Let's put that in. I want to put some peppers on the top to make it look so you can see the peppers. Now that looks a bit, yeah, doesn't it? So let's make it look a bit pretty. Let's just clean the table and see what we've got that I can use. Excuse me, I need a chopping board. What have we got? We've got tomatoes, little tomatoes, peppers. Hmm. Let's make, look, we've got nice little cherry pepper, cherry tomatoes out of the garden. I think it needs a bit of red on there, don't you? Let's put a, these are very hot, these peppers. So we're going to skin them like that. Look, we've got the seeds in there. We don't want those. Let's just get rid of the seeds. Let's just make some diamonds out of that. I love the oranges and reds together. I don't think I better put any more of that on. We've got some parsley. This is the last of my parsley, I think, out of the garden. Everything's getting a little bit... <sighs> We've had enough. We're giving up. And it's windy. And I must say, our back lawn is full of yellow leaves. Not a nice sight at this time of the year. There we are. And that is a meal which is really, really easy to get ready. You've got, let's move that out of the way. You've got the main course, some vegetables, something to go with it. You can serve this over noodles, over rice, with potatoes. The choice is yours. So guys, let's go out with uh, 20 bucks. Twenty bucks, twenty bucks, we're on the line for twenty bucks. Thanks everybody, thanks for watching, thanks Dubois, stay safe and I will see you next week.